Okay. Um, I think we can start now. Uh, hi everyone. How's everyone doing? Uh, good. Good, good, good to hear. Um, so today this session we'll be doing uh will basically be uh kind of like the one two sessions ago where uh it was focused more on blockchain. So today we'll be focused more on AI. So uh, I'd like to introduce our uh, speaker today, Carrie Chan, Solutions Manager from COPE Solutions. Hi, Carrie. Hello, everyone. How's it, how's it uh, going, Carrie? Yeah, so I can start my presentation, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Can you see my screen? I think okay. so, yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Hello, uh, thanks Ricardo's introduction. My name is Carrie. Yeah, uh, I'm the solution manager from CRPE Solutions. Uh, this gives me one minute for a bit introduction of my company. Uh, we are incorporated in Hong Kong in, um, like, like, sorry, my screen has some problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, we are incorporated in Hong Kong in uh, 1985, which is wholly owned subsidiary of CLP Holding Limited, one of the largest investor owned power company in the Asia Pacific region. Our mission is to be the trusted partner to deliver energy and infrastructure solution for sustainable future. Um, that's by the uh, power industrial experience within the group, we are undertaking a variety of engineering works in six main aspects as shown. Uh, and today we will focus on smart building solutions after the speaking of basic AI concepts. Um, about the AI artificial intelligence, it's the feel of computer silence. Actually, is to um, mainly is to solving problems commonly associated with the human intelligence, such as learning, problem solving, and pattern recognition. Uh, you can chip AI is like a trial, brought into this world as a pain. It knows nothing until someone touches it something. AI is heavily influenced by the training environment, and we can further divide it, in, it into several fields uh, like machine learning, deep learning, and artificial uh, network. Uh, today, we will talk and share more real application cases related to machine learning. Yeah, machine learning. Uh, uh, it correlates on the idea that uh, computer systems can learn on their own from data obtained from performing previous tasks and past experience. Uh, that means that you don't have to be programmed and device every time you let it to work on a job. Uh, it has three uh, categories uh, like uh, supervision, and supervision and reinforcement. Yeah. Uh, supervision learning occurs when an AI system arrives at a predictable conclusion based on existing data. Uh, you may heard something always said about the big data. And actually it it take the all the it try to learn something from all this uh, data and check and uh, see is there any patterns and we can learn it from it. And the another way is the uh, unsupervised learning. Meanwhile, takes place when the uh, AI agent produces an uh, unpredictable result where it was not trained to do. Um, just like a human, sometimes you are planning to do something, but suddenly uh, you 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 may uh, affected from uh, the first party uh, factors. Just like uh, someone called you to do and other things. Uh, that's the something like unsupervision um, learning, yeah. 
And the last one is the reinforcement learning uh, deals with the training of the AI algorithms. Yeah, it, it can recognize the rewards of punishments so that it can come up with the best solution to the problem. And today I will focus on something related to machine learning. Actually, smart solution is a new trend in our engineering world. Uh, in the smart, our smart solution team is just teamed up in these two years. And we are already team up with some specialists in the industry and try to uh, deliver some real solutions to our customer to help them to uh, work better or uh, improving their uh, operations. And one of the real applications is the our uh, energy monitoring, sensing and automation solutions. Yeah. Uh, um, Actually, this solution is quite similar to uh, smart home, uh, as you may uh, know, the, some Alexa or some uh, Apple Home, right? And now we are uh, we applied this to the school and our workplace, uh, which helps them to improve their operation or some of their comfort levels. Um, typically, we will install uh, various uh, types of IoT sensors, just like motion sensor, temperature sensor, and lighting switch. We will collect all the data from the this sensor, and we will receive. Uh, we can collect all the commands from them, and we deliver to the gateway. And all this data will store in our. Uh, own cloud, we call it, we land in SEC cloud. All this, uh, you can see, uh, we can control and uh, monitor our school or web page for all these smart control devices like iPhone, like uh, website, etc. There is some user interface we already deployed it to our real customers. And, you can see in the uh, right hand side, there are some snapshots from our portals. And our portals is a um, platform with uh, our own design user interface. We focus on the four parts, which helps, really helps uh, the customers to do their, um, uh, to better their um, operations. Uh, the first one is data and reporting, uh, just like school. Uh, everyone would like to know how to uh, the to get some ideas on energy saving. And actually, it's quite difficult to identify which part we can save. So first, we have to understanding the energy consumption of different uh, areas, like air conditioner, uh, lighting. And maybe for the school, sometimes they forget to turn off the air conditioner, but they don't load until they they come to school on Monday, right? <laughs> so uh, our platform is able to recognize all this data and tell the customer you can save the energy from this, and we can keep track of your history, current. And sometimes we recommend schools to do some energy competition for more energy saving from different classes. Yeah. And also we can uh, use some smart control. Um, as just say that just like smart home, we can control the lighting, air conditioning, and including the curtains. We can, um, if no people, or no student inside the classroom, we can turn off it automatically. And about the smart office side, we would like to use this platform to give some insight for the users. For example, the their facility usage is that um I have, for example, my office have a uh, thousand face area is that all the staff is come to office or uh, or over 15% staff is go out for sales and marketing or meeting the clients 
uh, with this insight, we'll get uh, the customer to better uh, uh, monitoring and control their uh, office facilities. And now the key control areas is the uh, just mentioned uh, energy consumption, uh, the air conditioning, how to give the comfortable uh, area for the users. We will use the temperature. We are uh, actually uh, the the most comfortable temperature is around 25 degrees Celsius. But everyone in summer will need get into the office or get into the uh, classroom, they will turn it to the, the lowest as it can. <laughs> then, then about half an hour, you will feel, oh, it's a cool, it's very cool. Then I should turn uh, the temperature uh, higher. Then if we install some sensors, then it will automatically turn the temperature into the most comfortable level for you. That is one of the machine learning, I think. <laughs> um, and the other is the air, con uh, air quality level. Uh, today, we are always wear the masks everywhere, right? So uh, many of them paid more attention on the indoor air quality. Um, we will uh, install, we have uh, got some sensors to install in the classroom or the uh, web page to get to monitoring the real time indoor air conditioning uh, situation. For example, the filter level, the particle material that which may affect the human um, uh, health. And our system can send some alerts when the air conditioning, uh, uh, when the air quality is not well and to let you know the, how to improve that. Yeah. And for the energy consumption side, this, uh, uh, the technology is much more improved. Yeah. Uh, now we can do some easy cut and pay system uh, well, it's, all the is connected by the uh, just put into the some uh, power circuitry. Uh, the MCB board. I'm not sure is that you know what is this. <laughs> yeah, uh, but sometimes you may see the uh, how to say that maybe some uh, you can see that your home that is the circuitry to supply the. Uh, the power from to your to your to your home, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. The and this one is more like the uh, the office level. All this sensor you can see is raised out. It's all battery powered, and it can be more easy to install. Uh, uh, in the engineering side, yeah. All these food, the Wi-Fi, wireless. Uh, actually, this kind of the technology is uh, um, improve our, uh, uh, shorten the installation time. You can uh, maybe um, the past years, the old technology is need to uh, uh, some do some wiring for the power and the control cable. And nowadays they they don't need to do this kind of installation work. And the installation period is uh, highly reduced from maybe one to two months to one to two weeks. Yeah. And the, this one is about the uh, space and facility uh, measurement. Yeah. So uh, sometimes you may uh, some meeting rooms are booked by someone. However, uh, if you walk past the, the meeting room, there's nobody here. Uh, so we would, uh, our system would like to uh, install some motion sensor to check is there anyone inside the room. And if nobody in here, then we'll check out, we'll auto check out the room and let and all the people to use it. 
um, and also the hot desk, the most uh, this was trying to uh, to to um, to let the possibility to the staff to use their own area. They can book their own table for their use. That some like uh, how to say in the English. <laughs> Uh, uh, just left it. Uh, I'm sorry that I can't remember the uh, actual terms of language. And about the people counting, uh, I think it, it really um, works for the some uh, retail shop and the shopping mall. They would like to uh, collect all this data for better marketing and sales arrangement. Mm, this is the booking system just say that and we can we have or uh, we have tried to collect some data from our orders and from the real customer and we can see that some nearly 13 percent of scheduled spaces go to waste the cost company yeah it's a thousands of dollars if they can use uh, the this space and went to the other users yeah I think they they cannot uh, the payback time is will be shorter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This picture is just so the how easy to use our platform. You can see the you can locate your your own web page from your iPhone and increase your accessibility and save time and, and easy to check in and out for some QR code or the NF tab, just as per the customer's request. And this is the ventilation. We can, uh, con our system can control the different types of the air condition systems, uh, like the Tanko unit, VRE, speed tag unit, and some uh, VAV. And our system already integrated with BMS, and uh, not under development right now. Uh, BMS system is a very comprehensive system using in the uh, commercial building. It, the long term is the building management system. It can control the whole building's air conditioning, uh, the lighting, and the fire system, or etc. And this one is the uh, just mentioned is how to keep track and improve your indoor air qualities. And then our sensor can monitor the temperature, humidity, CO2, TVOC, and PM 2.5. We can also give you some insight through the report and analytics. We can check the changes in the indoor air quality over the time. For example, your room, your classroom, it just uh, complete the valuation work. You can check is that suitable for you to live in, <laughs> or you have to do some. Uh, we have to install some air purifier to make the room, uh, uh, the room area is much more better. <laughs> yeah. You will also receive some alerts when the air quality needs attention. And our platform is open integrated with different types of sensors. You can see in this page, we have already integrated over uh, 20 sensors to that. And we are coming, we will integrate more and more to suitable customers. Lead. Actually, all this data have already stored in our crowd. And we actually, we do some uh, we try to do some machine learning from this. For example, uh, the customer will, would like to turn their air conditioner to which temperature level, or, or the, uh, we can, through the motion sensor data, we'll, uh, we'll know the utilized uh, rate from this classroom, uh, rep pace, et cetera. And the next one is more related to building level. Uh, 
We have another solutions related to the facility management with some AI analytics, which lambda, we lambda in building scope. Um, there are some uh, big, change, big challenges to building management. And uh, as just mentioned, they have a comprehensive system to do some controlling for their air conditioning, lighting, etc. But all this data, um, they have uh, up to now, they are not really using data to do some analytic or doing something uh, to do uh, enhance their energy saving. And this system is to connect all the data from BMS and we will do some enhancement and recommendation to them. And in this page, you can see BMS connecting a very large uh, numbers of data from this systems. And we can connect all this data through open protocol. Uh, you may treat, uh, just like a LAN cable, we can pop the LAN cable into the gateway and connect all this data easily. Yeah. We can also connect some extra data and with some IoT sensor, for example, the uh, outdoor level, people canting or other IoT sensors. And after our platform is able to uh, use data to, to do some analytics, we can visualize the real-time data, optimize the system health list, and we can also do the, some fault detection. For example, uh, we uh, the machine will learn the pattern from this data and they will get some detection. Oh, this data is something wrong. Then it will send to uh, the customer to alert them to do some P maintenance. Yeah. All those um, features can make the customer a uh, cost saving, energy saving, land power saving, because we don't know. Uh, Previously, we don't know when the machine will damage or suddenly down, right? Through the system, we can get some alert, then you will say, oh, it's time to do some maintenance work for the uh, system, yeah. And also, uh, the, we, we can customer the reporting and alert to the customers, uh, just like do some homework <laughs> for them, because uh, in the real application, um, they have to do many reporting to the top management for um, for request the money to do the maintenance, <laughs> and our system can help them to do the report in ultimate form. Yeah. Um, so there's some portal and some screen capture for our system uh, showing to the users. And there are some fault detection. It's a very complex drawing to show how to do the data analytic or some how to alert that, oh, your effort is some problem. You should go to the uh, 410 to check the, the machine. And this is some, also is some screen capture uh, for the the outdoor temperature is how to relate to the your cooling load. That means the your uh, just like the power consumption of your air conditioning. But this is the building scale, and also they will recommend you how to control the system. Uh, for example, we can predict the uh, the temperature is very high and uh, at around. Childhood call, then we will recommend the system to do some uh, control works. Yeah. Um, this is the benefits to the users, the energy efficiency, relationship with the talents and customer, because you can predict some uh, unexpected uh, damage from the the machines, you can 
you can early alert them to do some maintenance work. There is a good practice with them. And also we can increase the productivity and the social responsibility because we can achieve the energy consumption targets. <laughs> And the, the last real case of sharing is the chiller pump optimization. Chiller pump is just like the half of the building because chiller is the, uh, the building scale air conditioning. Yep. And many people are afraid that they suddenly the chiller will down because the whole building will suddenly feel hot and everyone will uh, record the complaint. And this system um, um, can, can do some automation control to the chiller and uh, achieve the both energy saving and the comfortable level to make sure the users are working in the very comfortable level. Yeah. And this system already installed over 15 cities and we also have applied this to Hong Kong and sign uh, oh, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure uh, the sign up the sign up at um, the shopping mall yeah and this some very technical information for quick share <laughs> yeah and this system can can, it's quite attractive to the users because it can save up to 40% energy saving. And we also applied it to the, uh, let me jump into the last pages, is the, we can we also apply it to our CLP premises uh, in 2012. And we are, we are very happy that we can save the energies nearly 20%, yeah. Uh, that's the real application sharing related to AI and machine learning. Yep. Any? Perfect. Uh, first of all, Carrie, uh, thank you so much for the presentation. That was really interesting. Uh, I'm afraid it's too boring and, and <laughs> for the students. <laughs> <laughs> um, now we'll give, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, we have, uh, we now have a quick uh, Q&A session for you guys. Uh, if anyone has uh, yeah, anything to ask. Um, I would like to ask, like, how does machine learning, like, connect to deep learning and is it also as applicable in Hong Kong and with AI as um, machine learning is? Um, actually, uh, Hong Kong is a quite traditional city. Um, they are quite protected themselves. AI is still very new for them. Uh, what we are doing is to connect the, uh, uh, the data and try to analytic and to show them with the report uh, uh, to make them believe it. <laughs> this is AI is work for them and won't disturb their, uh, their real living. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I, I actually had a question uh, regarding one of the first slides. You spoke about the different types of AI, uh, like machine learning and deep learning. I, I actually had a, yeah, a similar question to Charlie. I was wondering uh, if you could tell us what the difference is between machine learning and deep learning. Um, actually, they are quite similar. Uh, deep learning as will be drilled into specific uh, area. For example, uh, the auto driving it will uh, focus on the direction or the the road uh, condition, and and for the and for the machine learning maybe we we can treat it as a broader area. We connect all the data to do some analytic reporting. Yeah. I see. Okay. 
Um, anyone else have any questions? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, Carrie, I was wondering if you could send me the presentation so I can uh, send it out to all the students later. Uh, that way they can see for themselves. Oh, and sure. Sure, I can share it. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, thank you. Thank all of you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Carrie. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, thank you.